Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning everybody and uh, welcome to this course on bioenergy. I have already given you the introductory video about what the course will cover, but today we will slowly start to explore this uh, wonderful world. So, whenever we talk about energy, different kind of thoughts come in each one of us's mind. We think about oil, we think about electricity, we think about power stations, we think about uh, filling fuels like petrol or gasoline or um, diesel into our cars or when you go to the kitchen, we think about the cylinder gas, cooking gas and all these things. They all are forms of energy. As a matter of fact, if we think over it, our whole civilization, our whole growth is a direct function of our energy consumption. As a matter of fact, it is being always said, the development of a country, how developed it is, is decided or the currency which is used for that is how much per capita energy consumption is there. Most developed societies of the world consume way more energy as compared to the societies which are not that well developed. And that has a direct link to the economy of the world. And those which are, you know, developed economies, they consume way more energy. Those which are developing economies, they consume lesser, lesser energy than the developed economies. And those which are underdeveloped economy has a scarcity of energy. So, our life, our day to day living, our national status and our global standard and our global status with respect to other countries is a direct function of energy. So, in this course, which is about bioenergy. First of all, we will talk about the global energy landscape. So, and then in that global energy landscape where bioenergy stand and what is this bioenergy is all about because as you will go through different kind of monograms or different books, different lectures all over, there is every possibility that one may get confused because there are several aspects of it. And, uh, to give a holistic view is kind of bit challenging. So, in this course, my aim will be to give my young readers a very holistic view, a overall view and from that overall picture, whichsoever aspect of bioenergy in their life they wanted to pursue or even just wanted to get more and more knowledge into it, they will have sufficient background so that they can proceed in that direction. So, it will be kind of uh, mapping the whole spectrum of bioenergy with respect to the global energy landscape. Okay. So, in a way you can say, so let us start it. So, so, this is what is our course title is and if you see this course title, it has two parts. And one part is this part which is the bio and the second part is this part which is the energy. So, our initial talk will be on understanding how energy revolves around our life. Okay. So, the core idea will be once you kind of get an idea about the whole spectrum of bioenergy, you can philosophize the whole subject. So, keeping that in mind, the, I have divided the course into five different segments. The first segment we will be talking about segment 1 or module 1 what you will see is about introduction to bioenergy. 
So, in the introduction to bioenergy, which is today is the first lecture of that, we will be covering five lectures on it on introduction and in those five lectures we will talk about the whole energy landscape and how in our day to day life energy plays a significant role. Followed by that we will move on to the module 2. Module 2 we will have basic biomass technology. which is essentially how in nature biomass is being produced which will include the basic processes of photosynthesis and other route like chemosynthesis by which biomass is produced and the part 2 will give you an overview of how these biomasses are being transformed into different form of usable biomass as a source of energy. Having said this, we will move on to the third part of the course where we will be spending three weeks on it on about different kind of biofuels which are being generated from this different sources of biomass. Okay. So, we talked about the biomass, now the course will move into three different fragments which are same which is part 3 which is biofuel 1, then we will go to part 4 which will be biofuel 2 and biofuel 3. So, do not get confused the reason to give 1, 2, 3 is just to classify them in different categories and kind of you know give you an overall picture of the different sources from which these different kind of biofuels are being developed. Followed by this, after the fifth section, we will move on to the sixth and the seventh section, which will essentially will be another route where we will talk about the newer, newer technologies like biopower generation, one phase one and phase two. So, in this section, this is a section where we will be investigating all the different kind of newer and newer technologies where different kind of uh, biomass or biomaterials are being converted into different kind of charge storage devices where the crop residues could be transformed into uh, say supercapacitors or batteries to storage store charge or different kind of uh, bio resources which may find applications in uh, solar cells, different kind of uh, dyes which may be used for uh, harvesting solar energy at the very remote places. So, such technologies which are evolving technologies currently and which I believe that will help you to broaden your horizon about the whole area of bioenergy will be covered in those section which is numbered as 6 and 7. The last section which is uh, the bioenergy end use distribution and economics. Okay. This is the last section which is who are the end user and distribution and of course, it will be linked to the economics of using bioenergy. So, if you look at the course very carefully, you will realize we have distributed the course in 8 weeks. So, so this is week 1, what we will be dealing with? This will be week 2, 5 lectures, 5 lectures each and within the bio well section week 3, you have week 4, you have week 5 and then we have the biopower section which will be week 6, week 7 and then we will be concluding on week 8. So, 
what is important here is if you have this map in your brain that this is how we are going to follow it will be very easy for you to you know if you miss out any lecture or something you exactly know where to tell it and where to pick it up and what I will do further is once we will go to every week I will give you kind of an outline how say today's lecture is related to tomorrow's and likewise and so forth. So, you will have a mind map of all the 40 lectures very clearly in your brain that what is the sequence how I am trying to narrate the story of a very broad horizon called biomaterial uh, bioenergy. Okay? If you look around you, you will see that how energy is involved in your life. We talk about say air. So, you need it to supply clean air. If you need clean air in any room or anywhere, you need heavy duty pumps or HEPA filters or something to make the room clean. Say for example, it is operation theater or you know very clean room for any kind of manufacturing. We talk about water which is another resource. Okay. So, let us kind of enumerate some of these things which will kind of give you an idea how energy is really ruling our life. Okay. So, say for example, we talk about like I will put three columns which will kind of give you an idea. So, say for example, we talk about say air. These are the basic requirements, basic needs of our life. Then we talk about say water. Okay. Then of course, food. Then comes our shelter. And then comes our clothing. Now, in order to have these things, so we need, we will always look for clean air. We wanted drinking water, then we look for abundant food supply. Then we need eco friendly shelters. As you must be aware of, government has promised that by 2020, each one of us will have their own home or housing. Then we need sustainable clothing. For all these things, if you realize, if you see the other side, they all demand certain things in common. Now, one of them. For that we need clean pollution free air that requires energy in order to clean the air. Pollution free air, then water you need the purification that requires a lot of energy input. So, if you look at all the big water cleaning plants all over the world in the cities in other places if you kind of you know see there will be a place where all the water is being collected and goes through a series of filtration assemblies which consumes a lot lot and lot of energy to <coughs> maintain over a period of time and that consumes a lot of electricity then comes to the food if we talk about the food production in terms of the agriculture we'll talk a little bit more in our next slide on this thing. So, those of you who are from village background and those of you are not, you all are aware about that ammonia is being used for all the agricultural purposes. You will be surprised to know that the amount of energy which is consumed for ammonia production is phenomenal and we will take this as a case study in our next slide. So, before that let us finish this chart out here. Then we talk about the shelter. So, we talk about the eco friendly shelters. So, then for that we need the construction materials which has to be developed. Okay. And in terms of the clothing you can we have the fiber production and these fibers has could be natural as well as synthetic. And if it is a natural fiber, then we are talking about a form of biomass. We will talk later on that. And if it is synthetic, then we are transforming some certain things. And this all demands a huge an amount of 
energy input. So, so highlighting word is energy. So, you may appreciate that for the bare requirements of our whole living, we are completely dependent on different kind of energy sources and most of our energies are being provided by either by the fossil fuels or partly by solar, very little though. And these fossil fuels are used to produce electricity, which runs our whole life. Whether it is a air conditioned room, whether in a very cold place you have to run a heater or your other option is that you burn woods, which is nothing but a biomass. So, all our life is nothing but an energy economy. Now, from here, I will take a very simple example to kind of give you an idea in our next slide. Okay. I told you that we will talk about a little bit about the agriculture. Okay. So, let us move on to the next slide where we will talk about. So, for the ammonia, so ammonia is, so this is the molecule of ammonia in H3. Okay. So, this is the case study we are looking at. So, ammonia is actually produced by reacting hydrogen plus nitrogen okay which is abundant okay by a process called habers process haber process and this haber process was developed more than a century ago in 1905 now if you see this reaction this reaction seems very simple i mean there is hardly anything which uh, cannot be achieved in it. Okay. But here is the catch for this reaction. This reaction has an input of significant amount of hydrogen and from where you obtain this hydrogen. So, this hydrogen which is, is provided by the natural gas which is via steam reforming. There is a process called steam reforming steam reforming you can go and check into all the habits process and all these things you will realize so this steam processing so as a matter of fact the largest in agriculture the largest consumer of fossil fuel in modern agriculture is ammonia production for fertilizer of course via the habits process and this is of course, we know that the how essential it is for intensive agriculture and the specific fossil fuel input to fertilizer production is primarily the natural gas and this natural gas is the one which helps in the production of the hydrogen. And from here, once this is produced, these are put in a compressor. In the compressor, from the compressor, this is moved to a ammonia synthesis vessel. And in the ammonia synthesis vessel, this is the second source of energy expenditure. Ammonia synthesis vessel has to be heated at 500 degree centigrade with a catalyst like iron, aluminum oxide potassium oxide likewise. So, these are the different catalysts which are used. From here, the ammonia has to be removed. You kind of kind of see that where all the energy is being used and then there is a cooling vessel which is involved here and this cooling chamber this is recirculated like this through a recirculation pump. Now, what I will do <coughs> I will highlight all those places where energy is being consumed in order to run the recirculation pump steam reforming and this is the third zone. 
So, even in its most simplistic form, if you look at the whole process, you will see there are at least three different places where you have to consume significant amount of energy in order to produce the most or one of the very key fertilizer for production of food. Now, the question comes other way. If for one ammonia production, which is a case study, we have to use that much fuel or that much uh, energy has to be expended. So, you needed that much amount of supply of natural gas or some other form which will produce that amount of steam reforming hydrogen, steam reformed hydrogen. Okay. Now, if you look at it for any economy in the world, wherever it is, you can classify why I was telling us, let us say for example, let us take the case study of India. If this is our, this box represent India. Okay. Now, we import oil, all of you are aware of, we are an oil importer. Okay. And in order to import oil, we have to use lot of our foreign exchange. Foreign exchange spending. Okay. Now, so in other words, this is what I was telling you in the beginning. We are basically oil derived energy making us a oil dependent economy. And if we are an oil dependent economy, it means either we should have sufficient oil for us or we import oil from other places where oil is produced in abundant like Middle East, like in Latin America and all other places. So, what is the challenge? So, challenge is here. Could, so it is coming back to the slide, could we become from oil dependent economy to be a oil independent economy and how we can become oil independent economy and where lies our real hope. So, in today's lecture, I will close in here with this question that how India from an oil dependent economy can become an oil independent economy. Now, having said this, let us summarize what we talked today. First, we talk about that this course is aiming at giving you a overall picture of bioenergy with respect to the complete global landscape of energy, sources of energy okay, and consumption of energy. Then we discussed how, uh, how a country is being positioned or its people are positioned with respect to their energy consumption. If you are a high energy consumer, you fall under developed countries. If you are a moderate energy consumer, then you fall under developing countries. And if you are a low energy consumer, then you fall below, almost you can call it a something like a poverty line or energy line. You can draw imaginary energy line. If you are below that energy line of consumption, then you are really underdeveloped. Okay? Then we talked about how we have distributed this course in a way so that this course will give you an overall picture. So that at any point of your life you want to explore anything, you exactly know what is the map of all the developments which has happened and which are about to happen in next 50 years or so. And then we talked about how in your day to day life, whether it is a clean air, whether it is a water, whether it is a shelter, whether it is food. <coughs> or whether it is clothing, how energy is directly involved in your day to day life. Okay. And then we took a case study of ammonia, ammonia production by Haber process. And I, we showed you or rather we shared with each other that 
for such a simple molecule which is NH3 which is so very broadly used the amount of energy which is being consumed. So, that from there we talked about we are energy dependent economy and our our uh, rather the oil dependent economy how we can become an oil from an oil dependent economy to an oil independent economy could we really put our thrust on bioenergy production because that is where lies lot of our hope being a country which is in a sub very close to the tropics and subtropic zone where there is abundant biomass production all over the nation could we really make a difference in that area. So, this is the overall spectrum. So, apart from it what I will do all these lectures what you are seeing what I am drawing in front of you I will scan some part of my own notes and I will just put them as powerpoint for you people you can also go through them ok. That will kind of give you an overall idea and I will send you all the references which will also help you to refer to the right kind of books and most importantly it is a uh, very important that through these small lectures you try to philosophize the subject. It is very important because that is the most important thing. It is not an informative thing. It is most important you should have a philosophical bend to realize that ok what really needed to be done to address one of the most challenging question could one day we become a oil independent economy and uh, we should be so powerful enough that we should be able to you know give energy to others. So, with this I will conclude my first lecture in the second lecture we will pick up the topic by looking at the global energy landscape where we stand and where lies the advantage of being so uniquely positioned close to the equator and in a very subtropical zone where we really can have enormous biodiversity to support the cause in which we are working towards called bioenergy ok. Thank you.